In 2021, nearly 6,000 motorcyclists died on US roadways, accounting for 14% of all traffic fatalities. And since there are fewer riders than drivers to begin with, that means motorcyclists are actually 24 times more likely to die on the road compared to those in cars. Are we completely at the mercy of chance? Or is there something more we can do to improve the odds of street survival? Let's deep dive into the crash records from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration to find out the where, why, and how of motorcycle accidents, and what we can do to help prevent them. While riders like to say it's not motorcyclists that are dangerous, but other drivers, that's not always true. Nearly half the time a motorcycle crashes, it's the only vehicle involved. What's more, 39% of all motorcycle fatalities involved a helmetless rider, and 26% of them involved alcohol. In the instance of a bike colliding with a fixed object, 41% of the time they were riding drunk. In fact, riders are the top offenders of being drunk in fatal accidents, more so than car drivers. Oh, Whoopsie! Oh, I fell, huh? Tipped over a little bit. Then there's speeding. NHTSA reports that 34% of motorcycle fatalities involve speeding. Even for those who insist they only go slightly above the speed limit, it can have serious consequences. 35 miles per hour equals 51 feet per second and 50 miles per hour equals 73 feet per second. So when you go 50 in a 35, you have 22 fewer feet to stop per second, meaning far less time to react if and when something goes wrong. That's a big deal, because when motorcycle fatalities involve another vehicle, 43% of the time, it has a car turning left into the path of the rider. Less speed, more intuitive anticipation, and faster reflexes on the brakes would help improve the odds of survival for the motorcyclist. Speaking of rider skill, records show that 36% of all motorcycle fatalities involve a rider who has no motorcycle license. According to the computer, you don't have a motorcycle license. Because you don't have a license, I can't let you go. Now to be fair, this data is somewhat incomplete. NHTSA does not report how many of these riders had a learner's permit or not, or how much riding experience they had, regardless of license status. For all we know, Many of these riders may have years of seat time, but never bothered to get a license or had their license suspended. So it's possible and even likely that poor decision makers, rather than exclusively new riders, are responsible for this high rate of unlicensed fatalities. And that begs the question, what other data points in these statistics aren't telling us the whole story? For example, did you know that only 2% of all motorcycle fatalities happen in the rain? Is this because wet conditions aren't dangerous? Or is it because the vast majority of riders choose not to ride in the rain? And were you aware that, statistically, the most fatal month of the year for motorcyclists is August, while the least fatal is January? But again, riders avoid bad weather, so it makes sense that there are fewer riders on the road in winter than in summer. What this all means is that context is important when we look at the data. We have to be picky with which statistics are gonna inform rider habits. The good news is, if we can better understand where and how these accidents are occurring and identify the common trends, then we have a chance. A chance to change habits, be more aware, and keep more riders safe out on the road. So, first and foremost, protect your head. By just putting a helmet on, you improve your odds of avoiding a fatal crash by 61%. Second, don't drink and ride. Opt for a non-alcoholic beer or a mocktail, or skip the bar altogether and plan your ride stops at places like ice cream shops and cafes instead. Saying no thanks to a drink while riding increases your chances of survival by 74%. Up next, avoid speeding. Going fast is fun, but if you contain that throttle hand, it'll level up your odds by nearly 66%. Finally, ride with a valid license. Getting your motorcycle endorsement is a sign that you're a responsible and law-abiding rider. And if you truly want to improve your odds, you should be continually working towards honing your technique on the bike. Quicker and better assessments of road situations will help you avoid more accidents, and good reflexes will mean a faster response to danger. We can't control every element of the road, but it's time to take back what we can control. Make good decisions, ride defensively, ride sober, and hopefully ride for many years to come. 
If you want to see all the numbers involved in the statistics of street survival, head on over to Common Tread to read my full write-up about the topic. Stay safe out there, and keep it on to you.